Hello YouTube, my name is Mark Woodyard. I am a looping artist, I am a multi-instrumentalist. I am here to show you the routing of my entire setup. I've had a lot of people ask me lately um, how I'm doing what I'm doing. So we're gonna break it all down, walk you right through it. Um, let's start with my guitar. Um, if you come around here, this is the Line 6 Helix LT. Uh, it is a guitar uh, effects processor, amp modeler. It has a whole range of effects, whole range of compressors, reverbs, delays, everything you could ever want. Um, it makes my guitar sound like a guitar or a bass. Super trippy guitar. A low synthesizer. So that's a lot of fun. So the guitar is stereo outed with these two pink patch cords all the way up, running all the way up into this machine, which is the RC505 MK2 Loop Station. Loop station. Loop station. So the guitar is running into the first instrument input, which is a stereo patch input. And there's two of those. There's two stereo patch inputs. There's also two microphone inputs. And for the second instrument input, we are running this microcorg. And there's a mixer right here within one of the menus in the 505. And you can control all the volumes of whatever you put into this 505, which is very handy. You have four input effects right here. I have a phaser here, and I've got a pan delay and a reverb, which I can demo here with my guitar, because that's my, my mic's not running into that. Makes a little phaser, and then when, when you hit the effect, you can control how much the effect's on the effect. It's a panning delay. It's a reverb right here. And so you got control. You can kind of hit those things off and on at your leisure as you're kind of going through. And then once you loop something, you can, which we'll do in a little bit, uh, you've got track effects that uh, you can affect after you've looped something. You have outgoing effects so you can mess around with things. So that's the first looper. We've got a guitar. And we've got a synth going through that. And that lines out. There's a main output here. Stereo lines all the way into the mixer, which we'll get to. I'm going to skip over the drums for a second and go to the second looper, which my vocal is running into. And right now, there's input effects. There's an EQ running on my mic, which uh, cuts some of the low end of my mic, which is kind of helpful. Uh, makes it a little more clear. And then I've also got... A delay, which you can control, you can control how, much how, of the how delay, much of the delay, much of the delay, this, delay knob this knob you've got. you've got. And then you've got reverb. And then I've got a transposer. So I can make my voice really high. Really low. Uh, but there's a whole bank of effects in here that you can, um, again. And the reason I have, I mean, you could, you could technically run your show on, on one of these. Um, you could run a mic and instruments into it. But what I like about having the vocals over here is that I've got five separate channels just for vocals. And once they hit the mixer, um, you can equalize uh, your vocal channel differently um, and, you know, uh, maybe record it. If you've got a multi-track recording, you can separate your voice from the rest of the instruments uh, over here. So we've got vocals. We've got but, 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 all those effects. And then you can loop your vocals and add effects after, which we'll do in a second. Uh, so now we've got guitars, we got synth, we got vocals, now we got drums. So this is machine. This is the MK3 machine. And this is the controller. And my laptop over here is running the machine software. And so that when I'm running drum loops. This is sunk with this. And you might say to yourself, how are all these machines communicating together? You've got 
a looper over here, a looper here. You got a drum machine, you got a guitar board, you got a lot of different things going on. We use the joy of MIDI technology to connect all these things. And we got this little guy here, which is a quadra through, which is a MIDI solutions quadra through it. You give that little box one MIDI clock. So you come over here, come back over here, and we've got MIDI out. So this is the master looper, and it has a tempo right here. You're running MIDI out all the way into this box, into MIDI in, and then that splits that clock four different ways. And then you can run that clock to whatever gear. I'm running it to the microcorg right here. I'm running it to the machine in the back of here. So you're going MIDI out, MIDI in, and then MIDI out four ways, and then it, to whatever else you're going, MIDI in, MIDI into this looper, MIDI into this drum machine, MIDI into this microcorg, MIDI in to the guitar board down there. That way, this tempo right here will control. As, as you're controlling it, if you, if you zoom in here, you can see this tempo will change as I go up. It looks all glitchy, but as I go down, that tempo stays in sync with this guy. So if I'm running drum patterns and I press play on this guy, see here we got a drum pattern that I've made so I've made if I go to pattern mode in here and we could go more into depth into all these pieces of gear I'm just kind of skimming over all this but I have I'm running out of breath doing it I'm getting so excited um, we've got a four on the floor pattern that I pulled up so that's just like house beat We're running at 116 beats per minute 117 for the heck of it just like that. So I'm running I'm, I'm running this in mute mode, which holds the mute button. So any sounds I put in here, I can just, with the hit of a button, I can bring in and out. And I've also got all these other groups of sounds. So I've got, got some congas here. I've got shaker. Got a little shaker. Um, yeah, I've got swing patterns in here. Ooh. You got a master swing button right here, so you can tr control how much swing. This loop's like kind of half swung, so you can, I've got like maybe 18% swing on there. And then you can uh, you can delete these tracks. So you've got all these tracks running, as you can see. They're just running, running, running. And on each of these tracks, you have properties. So I think these are set at four measures long. They're just running at four measures, four measures, four measures. And then this is all sunk together, so you can just... Let's put this to two measures just so it's a little quicker. One. And then you, you hit record, it'll start recording at the nearest measure. So you hit record. hit effects. I have a filter effect on this channel. A low pass filter. Also got beat repeat. So you can grab that. But whatever part of the loop you want, it'll repeat whatever part you want, depending on how you control this knob here. We got something going there. Let's loop the bass line.
super fun stuff. Lots and lots of fun. And then say I wanted to grab this guitar part. I got this guitar part. Put the effects button on. Do a beat repeat. Grab that part of the loop. Got some micro cord. here. Let's say we do, a, I've got a samba pattern in here I think. Just if I want to do a quick thing, do a quick thing, do a quick thing, do a quick thing, 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 and then I have these ones if I want to do like harmonies, like. We got a drum machine. Um, again, this is just kind of an, a skim. Oh, thing I forgot. We almost forgot, folks. We have a mixer. So all of this, we've got stereo line, stereo line, stereo line. So that's three channels this is using, three stereo channels. And right now I have it running into my audio interface, which is the Audio Fuse Studio made by Arturia. And that's running into some iPad software, which is Loopy Pro, which is a whole other looping software, but I'm just using it as a mixer. But you could run this into any mixer that you have, any analog mixer, uh, any mixer you grab from the music store. Um, doesn't have to be fancy. I, I usually run my show just on a regular Mackie mixer. Um, nothing fancy like this, but um, yeah, you're just running out of the looper, out of whatever, and then into the mixer. And then you kind of adjust that accordingly. Uh, depending on the room you're in, depending on uh, what's going on, you just want your drums to be nice and kicking. And uh, a lot of the mixing from the guitar comes from the Helix board. There's a full EQ um, and different adjustments you can make within that. Uh, so it's nice because everything's kind of kind of pre-mixed that way as long as you've uh, kind of done some work there. Um, and yeah, it's uh, 
it's lots of fun. So if there's any more questions, throw them in the comments. Um, I'm really happy to uh, kind of go through more of this stuff in depth. And um, if there's a piece of the gear you want me to, I might. what I might do is go kind of more in depth into the 505 because there's a ton going on, especially in the new one. There's a lot of things you can adjust. A lot of the way it comes out of the box is a few adjustments I make to kind of make it more user friendly and uh, make it more fun. So there you have it. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.